<laughs> that was a good one, Ron. We call this special workshop meeting in the city council to get uh, to order. Uh, you have in front of you a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and at this time I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Here are none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. One of these items was being stricken. Is that Actually, correct? number four, I don't believe we're going to have time to get to. Okay. That way you'll have uh, sufficient time to discuss uh, the other three items. All right. First uh, first item tonight is a reevaluation report. And, uh, Dr. Woodward will let you lead into that. Thank you. During our budget deliberations this year, we spent a lot of time talking about the future. And we know that one of the items that's going to impact the city and the county will be the revaluation. Uh, we're very pleased this evening to have the folks who are actually going to be charged with doing that. And at this time, I'll turn it over to Harry so he can introduce his staff member. And we do appreciate the information you're going to share. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Um, I'm Harry Smith, and my, with me tonight is Kevin Turner, who's our appraisal supervisor. And we did have a PowerPoint that we'd like to go through tonight just to talk about the revaluation process, give you a little general overview of the reval process, what steps are taken to uh, assess the properties, uh, go through the timeline uh, as far as implementing the project and the statutory requirements that go with it. And then Kevin's going to go through some sales sites and kind of show you what's, what the appraisers are seeing regarding uh, sales that are occurring out in the county. And uh, you can kind of see when we get to those slides what current sales prices are and how they compare to the current assessed values of the property and whether they're indicating de increases or decreases, and, and you'll see a little bit of a mixed bag as we go through those. Um, the main thing would kind of start off with um, the purpose for doing a revaluation, or what is a revaluation, and basically that's conducting a mass appraisal of all the real estate parcels in the county with the goal to create a fair and equitable tax base. And uh, the reason we do that, obviously the assessor's office, the county assessor is responsible for valuing all property in the county, which includes real estate, personal property, motor vehicles, uh, when you look at the real estate market, you'll notice that values change over a period of time. They don't always stay the same due to the market influences. And over time, they'll change in different areas at different rates because of different property types and that type of thing. So even though the state requires us to appraise at market value, that's as of the revaluation date. After that date, when market values or market trends change, it causes inequities in the tax base because some folks are paying what their property is actually worth. Some may be paying on a value that's more than their property is actually worth at that point in time and others the other way. So the revaluation is designed to adjust everybody back to the current market value and that's supposed to be going to create a fair and equitable distribution of the tax burden if everybody's paying on the fair market value. Um, in Anza County, the um, reval history briefly, the state requires that all counties in North Carolina conduct a revaluation at least every eight years. And there's been a lot of discussion over the years as far as if that's too long to do a revaluation. So our, our Board of Commissioners back in the 90s decided to do it on a more frequent basis. Um, they moved first to a six-year revaluation and then going uh, to a four-year revaluation after that. So currently, we're doing a four-year reval uh, based on the current resolution that our Board of Commissioners adopted. Uh, 2014 will actually be the second four-year reval. We, in two, year 2006 was the first six-year reval, then 2010 was a four-year, and 2014 will be the second four-year revaluation that we've conducted. Uh, just a quick overview of the revaluation process, and of course when you're on a four-year revaluation cycle, the first one is kind of a continuing process, which is reviewing the property characteristics. Our appraisers are out in the field all the time visiting properties due to new building um, permits that have been issued or property views that are requested by appraisers or just general observations in the areas in which they work. So they're constantly updating the property characteristics to reflect that the, the uh, square footage, the uh, depreciation, all those things that influence the value of the property are accurate because that's very important doing the revaluation to provide a, a proper assessment. Uh, the next step is collecting, verifying, and analyzing sales data. And we're going to look at some of the sales data that we've collected as we go through the presentation tonight. <coughs> Uh, that's important when we get down to assigning the values to the properties because we want the values that we assign to reflect what's actually going on in the market. Uh, the next important step is developing the schedule of values. And basically this is a, a manual that we construct um, that contains a lot of the procedures that are used in the appraisal process, um, how the data is collected, uh, the, goes through the grading of the properties, the, the construction styles and so forth. And basically that's kind of our toolbox for our appraisers to use so that when they appraise a property, they're looking at the 
the definitions that are used in that schedule of values and the rates that are included in there so that when they apply those rates to the property characteristics, it'll produce a value that's representative of what properties are selling for. And as uh, we're in the process of, of doing about three of these things right now, which is analyzing the sales data, developing the schedule of values, applying the schedule of values, and also statistical testing, which basically is um, what we do to, to tell if our assessments are equating values that, that correspond to what market values are. And uh, the State Department of Revenue also does um, value ratio studies for all 100 counties every year. And basically what they're measuring is assessment level. Remember we talked about market value. If the assessed value and the sales price are the same, obviously your market value, we're at 100%. If, it's, if one of the other of those is higher or lower than the other, then it's going to be something different than 100%. But we kind of do it based on the median sales price. So that the median sales are 100%. So uh, everything should be plus or minus about 5% by the majority of the observations that we're looking at. And um, in order to uh, make sure that we're doing that appropriately, we use mass appraisal guidelines that are published by the IAAO, which is our professional organization known as it's, uh, the International Association of Assessing Officers and also the North Carolina Department of Revenue. Um, the schedule of values we mentioned, there's actually a statutory process for adopting the schedule of values, and this is basically the timeline that we have laid out to um, go through that process. On September 16th, we'll be submitting the schedule of values to the Board of Commissioners and also making schedules available for public inspection. There is a um, public hearing required before the, the schedules are adopted, so we'll be advertising that public hearing, and then in October, we'll be conducting the public hearing and asking the Board to consider adopting the schedules at their October 21st meeting. One other statutory requirement that was enacted in 2003 by the state legislature was what's known as a revenue neutral disclosure. And this is really kind of a, something that happens after the reval is complete, but during the budget preparation process. And the original intent of this statute was basically to, to disclose to the taxpayers whether the revaluation is being used to increase tax revenue or not. And the revenue neutral, basically there's a formula that we use to go back and measure how much growth occurred in our jurisdiction since the last revaluation and calculate what the revenue neutral rate would be, which would be the rate that would, inc given the new values that were produced by the revaluation, generate the same amount of revenue, but also allow for the growth that we've seen in between time. And as you may recall last year, or not last year, but in the 2010 revaluation, uh, the county's revenue neutral rate was actually 60.5 cents, which was higher than the old tax rate. And that was basically due because we, when we had all the numbers finalized, our tax base only grew about two and a half percent, but we had been averaging around four to four and a half percent growth from new construction since the last rebound. So <laughs> had we not done a revaluation, we would have probably had a larger tax base in 2010 than we, than we had. Um, and then we ended up going to a 58.5 tax rate, but the revenue neutral rate was actually higher than the, than the rate that was adopted. Um, one thing we like to do, and we appreciate the opportunity to come share this um, information with you, the board here tonight, uh, we also will plan on doing a presentation to go out on GTN G14, schedule other public information uh, presentations to get the word out to the citizens and kind of give them some information about the revaluation. And also we'll have this information on our county website as we go forward. <coughs> and uh, we do have a, a, a place for questions at the end, but if anybody has any questions as we're going through this, feel free to stop me. We'll, <laughs> we'll be glad to address questions as we go through it also. I have a tendency to talk kind of fast, so <laughs> slow me down at this. But let me let me clarify sure. one thing for the public. The schedule that you just showed has to do with basically the schedule of the assumptions or parameters you're going to make in doing the revaluation. That's correct. So the public that's listening tonight, that's not a public hearing that talks about individual assessments. That's correct. That's simply a public hearing to say if you want to have input on how the methodology is put together, you can come. Absolutely. And yeah, the, the real assessment information is months away. Right. And uh, as we go through the, uh, oh, I'll back up to the timeline a little bit. We, we kind of stopped with the schedule of values, but we are currently planning on having the assessments published and, and mailed out to the taxpayers somewhere around the end of January during the first part of February time frame. But that's a good point. Thank you, sir. But, would, you, uh, would you elaborate on the schedule of values? Sure. Um, any specific question or just? Just kind of a expand on the okay that, yeah. okay yeah basically it's it's a it's a manual that goes through the appraisal process it talks about um, some of the 
little more in depth as far as some of those topics we talked about as far as gathering information, reviewing the property characteristics, categorizing properties, grading improvements. Um, it also contains a range of rates that are used in our computer system to actually calculate the values. In other words, <coughs> like a uh, uh, heated square foot rate for different types of properties or categories of properties, uh, a range of land rates a range of uh, codes that are used for different land classifications such as oceanfront lots or second row lots or, or uh, city interior lots, rural home sites, those types of things. It just goes in a lot more detail as far as the different categories and classifications and has a description of the, the methodology that's used to apply those rates to calculate the values. These, these are factors and values that correspond to those factors that you basically, the, the computer, so to speak, right. calculates that, that, then each individual right. property. The, the appraisers right. use those classifications to apply to each property to list its property characteristics so that when the calculations are done, it's, it's treating every average quality construction house with the same square foot rate. And then it's using the standard depreciation that's been assigned to that particular type of property so that it's uniform throughout. So that the appraiser isn't just going out and saying, well, this house is worth 50000 this one's worth sixty. There's a, a systematic process that evaluates what characteristics are recorded for that property and applies it to the rates that are in that schedule to calculate the values so that they're all done consistently. I guess my question really was, if I knew the schedule of values, could I guess my property value? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, within a range, okay. yeah. Within a range, yes, sir. I have a question in regards to, to your assessed value for a particular property. How, how, how close would it be to a independent real estate appraisal for that same set house? Is there a variance of 1%, half percent? Well, we're, bear in mind, we're doing mass appraisal. When you do a fee appraisal, they're going out and picking three comps. We're using the, the whole universe of sales to construct a schedule of values and apply those rates uniformly. So. Um, over the years, we see appraisals come in usually during the, the um, appeals process. It'll come into the Board of Equalization Review, and sometimes there's really close. Sometimes there's more of a difference, and and then in, in those cases, our board will go and dissect the accounts that were used in appraisal and make their own determination based on what the appraiser says, what the fee appraisal says, and what our staff presents as far as comps, and they'll make their decision whether to change it or not change it based on, on their um, experience and most of those have got a significant amount of appraisal experience. I mean, appraisal by definition is an opinion of value. Um, I think generally speaking, if it's within 5%, it's, you're both correct, so to speak. Um, you know, and we would, you know, the appeals process is, is designed to handle uh, assessments that are substantially overvalued and usually if it's within two or three or five percent the board's probably going to just sustain the value that we have on the property. So for example if, if someone just buys a, a home for example during that period of time and you know they go through the finance process and and uh, their independent appraisal came in at two hundred thousand um, and then your process gets finished and, and the value gets put at two hundred and forty thousand um, there shouldn't be that much difference. So it there, there would be that yeah. much difference. And usually, if there's something that much different, usually there's a difference in the square footage or something major that once we correct our records, it'll it'll kind of follow. And at on. that point, they can do the appeals process sure. and straight. Yeah. And we encourage folks. We're going to talk about the appeals <coughs> process at the end, as far as what folks need to bring us uh, that can can bolster um, what we're you know, our decision as far as making a decision on their value. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin. He's going to go through some sales slides, but before I turn it over, this is, um, we're going to kind of go through, there's, there's quite a few of these, but we'll go through them rather quickly, but basically just wanted to share some information as, as far as what we're focusing on and looking at. Up at the top, you see the parcel identification number. Right under that, you'll have the 2010 assessed value. In this case, it's 295140 uh, Down at the bottom, you'll see the neighborhood number, which is just a code that we use internally. Um, when we're doing a revaluation process, we want to make sure that the values that are set for each neighborhood are based on similar properties. So we group properties together by neighborhood codes, and ideally we'll find enough <coughs> comparables in each neighborhood to use to set the values for that neighborhood. Uh, during this revaluation, it has proven to be a little bit more challenging because some neighborhoods don't have very many sales. So in those cases, our appraisers are 
either expanding the time frame, looking a little further back in time, or, or expanding their geographic area to go down the road or a few miles down the road and, and find a similar neighborhood to use the comparables uh, for to set the values in those neighborhoods. Um, it'll tell you the township, and we're going to start out in Jacksonville. Um, all the sales sites that we have in here are 2013 sales that have occurred since the first of this year. And you can see down in the bottom left corner, this property sold for 268 and comparing the difference in the sales price to the previous assessed value or the 2010 assessed value, it's a 9% decrease. So just kind of want to go through what we're looking at on each side, and then I'll let Kevin kind of go through and, and do a little more. Um, but just before he does that, to clarify, just because on this particular sale there was a 9% de decrease doesn't actually mean that your assessed value in 14 is going to go down. Because if in the neighborhood of comparables, this house should have been selling as others sold at 285. So it's not, I mean, for the listening public, just because this house went from 295 down to 268 doesn't mean that that assessed value is going to come down 9%. Not necessarily, but what we tried to do when, when putting this presentation together is to take sales that are pretty typical as far as what we're seeing. So it doesn't necessarily mean everything in this neighborhood is going to drop 9% like you're saying, but this is pretty representative of what we're seeing. So, And as we go through the slides, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you up front, you're probably going to see more that have a decrease than an increase. And, and basically, um, that's pretty typical. It's probably 95% of the appeals that we've had since the last revaluation have been folks that bought their homes in 2011 or 12 or even 13 and they paid significantly less than what the 2010 value is. That's most of the appeals we're having. Like I said, that's not going to hold up true for every property in the county or in the city for that matter. But you'll see that in most cases when we're looking at sales in neighborhoods, we're seeing decreases rather than increases. So we've tried to pick sales that you're right, you're correct. It doesn't necessarily mean this property will be conveyed exactly that but it's kind of representative as far as what we're seeing. And we're just kind of doing this to kind of give you an um, um, overview of what to expect, so to speak, even though there's, these are not exact numbers. And there's more sales to occur between now and the end of the year, obviously, that'll, that'll change these numbers. So these aren't final numbers by any means. It's just as for illustrative purposes. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions while I'm going through the slides, just feel free to stop and stop me and ask, and uh, we'll do the best we can to answer them for you. And this, uh, this next slide we're going to take a look at is a townhome in the uh, village of the Glen, which is a section of Carolina Forest. And you can see the 2010 assessed value was $119,190. And just recently sold in January for $118,000, so a little less than a 1% decrease in value there. And next is a uh, home in Biltmore Estates. You can see the 2010 assessed value was 245860 And it just sold in April for 232000 And that represents a 6% decrease in value. This one is in St. James Park over in Williamsburg Plantation, which is off of Gum Branch Road. The uh, 2010 assessed value was 211,000. It sold in January for 205,000, and that represents a 3% decrease in value. And next, we have a house on Iverly Lane, which is in Woodlands. Uh, the 2010 assessed value is $301,820, sold this past May for $265,000, and that represents a 12% decrease in value. This one is on Fawn Trail over in Parkwood Estates. The 2010 assessed value was $269,440. It sold in April for $212,500, and that one represents a 21% decrease in value. This next slide we're going to take a look at is over in Northwoods. The 2010 assessed value was $160,710, and it just sold in June for $177,000. So that one represents a 10% decrease or increase in value, I'm sorry. 
this next slide is still in Northwoods. This one is on Vernon Drive. It was assessed in 2010 for $128,660. It just sold in April for $135,000 and that represents a 5% increase in value. And now we're gonna be moving towards the downtown area. This is a duplex on uh, Court Street. In 2010, it was assessed for $156,070, and it sold this past January for $162,000, which is a 4% increase in value. Now we're going to be moving over to Bayshore Drive area. This residence was assessed for $107,760 in 2010 and it just sold in July for $127,000 for an 18% increase in value. This sale is of a double wide over on a Miracle Drive. And in 2010, it was assessed at 73,340. It just sold in April for 68000 and that represents a 7% decrease. This is a duplex in Pinewood Downs. In 2010, it was assessed at $75,770. It sold in March for $65,000 for a 14% decrease in value. Just out of curiosity, <clears throat> of the ones that you've looked at this year, do you have a feel for what the uh, percentage increase versus decrease is? I mean, is it uh, half of them are increases, half of them are decreases? Or right now, it's really it's too early to tell because we early. haven't got. We're maybe we're less than a third of the way into the into the revaluation itself as far as assigning value so it's it could it could change next week as far as the percentage goes <coughs> because we don't have enough data in there yet okay. <coughs> and this next uh townhouse is over in marsh oaks which is back behind Bryn Mawr. in 2010 it was assessed at 101,210 dollars and it just sold for $104,000 in June for a 3% decrease. Looks like higher end homes are going for more. This is a house in Country Club Acres. In 2010, it was assessed at $278,380. It sold in January for $220,000, and that represents a 21% decrease in value. This is a house that's out in Southwest Commons. And in 2010, it was assessed at 154,160. It sold in May for 152,000, and it represents a 1% decrease in value for that one. Yes, sir, question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get into this or not, but a lot of our tax bases, commercial property apartments and regular commercial, What process do you use to appraise those and how, do you, how are, are those looking? Well, to be honest, we really haven't gotten into the commercial yet. We've been starting out with the residential and uh, we we'll kind of addressed a, a little bit about the commercial and how much a percentage of the tax base those are when we get down to the end. But uh, I, I haven't done enough study on this commercial. I don't know, Kevin, you can jump in here if you like to, to know. I think we'll probably see some increases in some areas uh, and it's kind of like there's a lot more residential than there are commercial, so I'm not sure if that'll be enough to no, offset. Just thinking, yeah, well, we may be looking at another side. and so on, it seems like we've had a, a lot of apartment building and see a lot of vacancy signs. Right. And do you on, use an income approach on any of those we, properties? We do. We we're uh, we ask taxpayers you know, during, if they disagree with this initial assessment to provide that information so we can. Uh, look at the income approach, and we actually had an appeal at the uh, Board of Equalization meeting this year uh, for one of the apartment complexes, and, and that was one of their concerns also. 
I think back during the 2010 reval, the occupancy rate on apartments was in the upper 90s, and in the Chamber of Publications now it's showing around 80%. So we've had some that have been brought on the books at the 2010 values, but we're probably going to be looking at having to, you know, when we get income information on those, we're probably going to be looking at some adjustments in the other direction. This but time. your initial appraisal is based on physical characteristics, land value, and the construction cost. Right, we use we we are required to use all three approaches to value, which is the sales comparison, the cost approach, and the income approach. And of course, we have cost figures um, and cost uh, okay. manuals, so that'll be primarily what we rely on initially. And uh, we had actually discussed sending some income questionnaires out to some of those types of properties also that maybe we can get the income information ahead of time and have that calculated in the initial assessment. So we're willing to endeavor to do as much of that as we can also. But income is a required component of the assessment process. Yes, and especially on that type of property is very important. Yes, sir. Okay, this next slide we're going to look at is in Blue Creek Farms, which is a subdivision out of Blue Creek Road. The 2010 assessed value was $222,820. It sold in July for $194,000, and that represents a 13% decrease. And now we're going to be moving to the Richlands Township. This house is in River Bluff subdivision. In 2010, it was assessed at $279,840. It sold in July for $225,000 for a 20% decrease in value. And this next slide is going to be in Trifield Estates, which is just outside the city limits of Richlands. The 2010 assessed value was $196,150. It sold in May for $206,000 for a 5% increase in value. The home in Heritage Village. The 2010 assessed value was $172,570. It sold in January for $166,000 or a 4% decrease in value. Now we're over to White Oak Township. This is in Aragona Village. 2010 assessed value was $131,290. It sold in February for $145,000, which was a 10% uh, increase in value. This next slide is in Brookstone, which is out off of uh, Rocky Run Road in the Piney Green area. The 2010 assessed value was $189,290. It sold in June for $177,500 which was a 6% decrease in value. Now we're going to show you some examples from the Swansboro Township. And this one is on Old Freeman Road, which is off the Belgrade Swansboro Road, just outside Swansboro. 2010 assessed value was $100,660. It sold in March for $96,000, which is a 5% decrease in value. This slide is a home that's in Halls Creek North subdivision. In 2010, it was assessed at $290,260. It sold in February for $259,000, which is an 11% decrease in value. This is a home in Oyster Bay. In 2010, it was assessed at $235,380. It sold in July for $219,000 for a 7% decrease in value. This is a home in Swansboro Acres, just outside the city limits there of Swansboro. The 2010 assessed value was $171,540. It sold in February for $158,000 for an 8% decrease in value. Now we're going to be moving into the Stump Sound Township. 
And this next slide is of a home in Sewell Fields, which is in Verona. The 2010 assessed value was $214,940, and it sold in February for $189,000 for a 12% decrease in value. This is a home in Old Dock Plantation. In 2010, it was assessed at $142,920. It sold this past July for $160,000 for a 12% increase in value. Now we're going to move over to Chadwick Shores. This is a 2010 assessed value was $151,290. It sold in July for $135,000 for an 11% decrease. This is a home at the village of Folkestone. The 2010 assessed value was $268,130. It sold in February for $230,000 for a 14% decrease in value. This next slide is of another townhouse that's in Holly Ridge. This is uh, Holly Ridge Townhomes at the uh, landing at Folkestone. In 2010, it was assessed at $131,910. It sold in March for $135,000. That represents a 2% increase in value. We have one more in Holly Ridge. This is in the neighborhoods of Holly Ridge. 2010 assessed value was $157,600. It sold in July for $160,000 for a 2% increase in value. Now we have two slides for uh, North Topsail Beach. This is on Sailview Drive, which is Soundside. 2000. Topsail. Oh, sorry, looked at the wrong one. <laughs> Topsail Reef Condos, I'm sorry. This one was assessed at $80,000 in 2010, and it just sold in June for $81,500 for a 2% increase in value. Now we're over to Soundside. 2010 assessed value was $570,520. It sold in June for $558,000 for a 2% de decrease. This is in Surf City on 9th Street. It's a canal lot. It was assessed in 2010 for $476,350. It sold in July for $458,000 for a 4% decrease. And that's uh, all of the slides we have for the sales that we're using to analyze. Now I'll turn it back over to Harry. And just to kind of recap on something we talked about earlier, um, Real, real property is only valued at market value during the revaluation year, but we're required to annual personal value personal property on an annual basis. So when motor vehicle values come out each year, they're, they're valued based on what they are at that point in time. So the revaluation is the only time that we redo the real estate to bring those back up or down to market value so that the, all the assessments are equitable with the other property classes. Uh, we talked a little bit about commercial a while ago, and this is just a chart that gives a breakdown of the total tax base. And um, real estate comprises about 86% of the total tax base. And of course, the big uh, three quarters of it is roughly um, residential real property. Then almost 11% is the commercial component, uh, followed by the industrial and the use value property. Is that county or the city you're talking about? This is county. County. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I have a slide in here for the city. And I'm not sure, it'll probably vary a little bit, but it's still real estate is going to be the, the vast majority of it. 12% uh, is personal property, which includes um, automobiles and boats and airplanes and business personal property, things like that. And then a little bit less than 2% is our public service company. Uh, so we primarily focused on the residential real estate during the presentation because that, that's what's going to affect the majority of the citizens. Um, kind of go through some of the most frequently asked questions that come up during every revaluation. Uh, which and obviously the, the first one is what happens if I disagree with the assessed value. Um, as we mentioned before, we were planning to try to have the notices out around the end of January, 1st of February time frame. Um, there's a process that we go through that's not a statutory process, but we call it the informal hearings with the property owner. 
And uh, last revaluation, we tried something a little different to make it as easy and as accessible for citizens as possible. We'll be doing that again this year. We actually had a, a link on our website where we could go in and, and fill out a, a form on our website and just click a submit button and it would email it directly to our appraisal department. Uh, they also had the capability uh, to attach documents such as an appraisal or comps or anything they wanted us to look at along with that electronic submission so that people didn't actually have to take off work and go down to the tax office. Uh, they could get us the information uh, at their convenience and we could review it. Um, once we go through that informal review process, the appraisers will be taking all that information that's submitted, identifying potentially problem areas or subdivisions or neighborhoods and going back and doing a review. And if there warrants a change, then we'll be sending additional notices out to those homeowners who have appealed at that level to notify them of the results of their, their appeal at that point. Um, statutory um, guidelines provide for a more formal review process, which is the Onslow -Okay County Board of Equalization Review. And by statute, that board has to convene no later than the first, of April, first Monday of April and no later than the first Monday of May. And typically during the reval year, it's probably on the latter end of that time frame when they will uh, meet. But hopefully by the time we get through sending the notices out and go through the informal reviews, most of the adjustments will, will occur during that time uh, before budgets are set. Um, there, obviously, there will be some additional adjust, adjustments that may happen um, in the May and June time frame, but we'll try to, to estimate those values for as best we can based on the volume of fields that we have at that point in time so that you'll have some good numbers to work with during the budget time. Uh, the final step in the appeals process, if they disagree with the uh, informal and also the local Board of Equalization Review, is to appeal it to the state level, which is the uh, North Carolina Property Tax Commission. Um, when taxpayers uh, disagree with our value, we ask them to um, give us what their opinion of the value is and how they can support that. Uh, we recommend if they've had a recent fee appraisal, submit that, um, whether it be for sale or refinance or home equity loan. Uh, sometimes if it's an older structure, it may have deterioration that we're not aware of, so we ask them to, to provide pictures of either the inside or the outside that would show those, those conditions. And if they're aware of any comp comparable sales that occurred in their neighborhood that maybe we're not aware of, um, and to bring those to our attention also. <coughs> um, the second question, and this used to be a lot more prevalent because usually values were, in, in the past couple of rebounds, we've seen some pretty hefty increases in the area. Uh, but basically, we, we try to remind folks that the values didn't change from one year to the next, but they're basically occurred over a four-year period of time, and a lot can happen in the real estate market up and down during that period of time. Um, one of the things that we've mentioned is that sales of older homes and new construction were valued at the 2010 rate. So properties that came online since 2010 were valued using that 2010 schedule of values, not necessarily what they just sold for, because by statutes we're required to do that. Uh, the 2014 values will be based on sales that occurred during the 2013 calendar year, which is leading up to the revaluation date. Now, let me ask you a question here. If we know that there are a lot of homes in, in the Jacksonville area that have been on the market for a while and they haven't sold, mm -hmm. if a person comes in and says, well, you have my value at 250000 I have it listed at 240000 nobody is buying the house, do you take that in consideration? Absolutely, because if, if they've got it, if we've had it assessed more than what they're trying to sell it for, I think that's a pretty good indication that we're probably a little on the high side. So we absolutely would take that into consideration. And once again, the, the purpose is to um, equalize property values, not necessarily generate revenue with the revaluation. It's basically just a redistribution of the tax burden based on what the current values are. Um, obviously, we don't know how much taxes will change. That depends on a number of factors. Um, as the governing bodies meet and consider their budget requirements, um, the, re the valuation is only one part of the, of the component that determines what the ultimate um, tax bill is going to be. Um, the, the budgets have to be set and the tax rates have to be determined by the, the county commissioners or the, uh, the local town boards in order to tell exactly how much their taxes will be compared to the prior year. Uh, the effective date for the revaluation is January 1st, 2014. Uh, this will be the basis for tax bills that will be mailed next July, so this is basically a year off before folks are actually going to see the tax bill that's associated with the revaluation, and of course that will be due September 14. And if you have any other additional questions or any other topics that we didn't cover, we'll be glad to try to address those for you. Council, any questions of Mr. Smith or, or uh, Mr. Turner? I have one more question. How much property tax is collected in Osmond County? Can you tell me? 
how much tax? I mean, you know, we got the city, the right, county, yeah. the <laughs> municipalities. I, I do not have that number right offhand. Uh, I say it's probably ninety-five million or so when you add the county cities together. I don't think it's hit a hundred million yet, but I think it's right ninety-six million per year. Other questions? I can get that for you if you like. Thank you. Harry and Kevin, appreciate you coming tonight and uh, updating us on the process of the reevaluation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate it very much. Mayor, if you'd like, before we begin the next topic, could we take a short break? Yes, sir. Okay. Stand adjourned. Thank you. Or um, recess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.